What's up, everyone? Mark Lobiner, TigerFitness.com. So I'm going to state, to start off this video, before we go into any data, a lot of people put too much thought into training. What do you mean? Well, when you're first starting out, or even in your first five years, at the end of the day, you don't train hard enough. You just don't. The best gains I made were with drop sets and rest pause and forced reps. That was my best gains. Now, I train smarter now. I train just as hard now, but I usually go right up to failure. I don't take it past failure because, well, I'm 44 years old. My recovery ability is not as great. However, the problem with the new generation is they have too much information. Oh, am I doing my full RIR? Oh, am I doing my full ROM? Am I dislocating my shoulder to bring my arm all the way back, full range of motion? Am I leaving two RIR, four RIR, six RIR? What, what am I leaving in the tank? Am I overtraining? Guys, the bottom line is I go to gyms every single day. I coach athletes and I train myself. I travel around the country and I get to see people at different gyms around the world. There is one component. The guys in the gym training the hardest have the biggest muscles, period. It's not the little skinny guy in lap pull down. Am I at a full 45 degree flexion or is this 46 degrees? Do I have two RIR? Do I have 2.4 RIR? Do I have ROM of 96 degrees? Well, what the fuck? Bottom line is you don't fucking train hard enough, period. You just don't train hard enough. But we have science. And then I'll go over the study. So I actually... I'm gonna actually read Menno Hanselman's. Um, he has a great post on this on his Instagram. If you don't follow it, follow it. In today's new study under review, the researchers compared the acute muscle growth signaling response of rest pause sets to traditional sets. Anabolic signaling was measured via multiple pathways that drive protein synthesis and muscle growth. A group of novice level strength men did leg extensions with different leg on different occasions. The traditional workout was three sets of 15 reps at 60% 1RM with 1.5, 1.25 minutes rest between sets. I always try to get 1.32 minutes rest between sets, but hey, 1.25 is good. The rest pause workout was three sets at 80% of 1RM, followed each by three mini sets of one to two reps with 20 seconds rest in between. They rested 2.5 minutes in between the three rest pause sets, and they trained a failure in each part of each rest pause set, leading to total 12 to 15 reps in most rest pause sets. The two workouts resulted in sim similar anabolic signaling with similar protein synthesis activation and possibly translating into similar muscle growth responses. Meaning that, based on what they measure in a controlled setting, Nothing was really different. They went to failure, tapped into too much, like, you know, too much fatigue. So the recovery is going to be slower for no friggin' reason. We cannot extrapolate anabolic signaling direct to long term muscle growth. Based on old research, this is from Meno. Again, follow him. I'll link his Instagram down below because I'm using his content because he's awesome. I expect the rest pause group to stimulate more muscle growth, especially more well trained individuals. See, Meno's real AF. Previous research has found that longer rest intervals and higher strength, higher training volumes both increase muscle growth and training intensity. Percent of 1RM does not affect muscle growth. So rest pause sets should increase muscle growth. growth. Yet the stimulus to fatigue ratio of rest pause sets is clearly poor. Two studies by Ennis et al. found that rest pause sets don't stimulate more muscle growth than traditional sets on a volume equated basis. Other research shows reaching muscle failure does cause significantly greater fatigue and delayed recovery. So his thing is to maximize your recoverable volume. I rec I'd rather just do more traditional sets than rest pause sets. For time efficiency, he does myo reps. We've gone over that on this channel. Basically, you do, um, you do a set to right up till failure. You rest about 10 seconds, you do three more reps. Rest about 10 seconds, do three more reps. There's ways you could do it, but that's generally how it's done. Um, so here's the deal. Most people don't train hard enough for any other shit to matter. Most people can't get to the gym consistently. Most people eat like absolute shit. They either don't eat enough or they eat too much. 
Look, if you're a gym bro, and let's say you go to the gym with your buddies. Look, man, I'm around you high schoolers all the time. I'm around college students all the time. I'm around aging people all the time. Old people, people my age, they just go to the gym and they kind of do equipment, do machines. They go through the motions. They don't really train hard. When I go to the gym, I got my hat down, headphones in, so I don't film my training anymore. I got to get it in. I go hard. And that's the reason at 44, I keep making gains. But most people my age, they're just like, oh, I did my eight reps. Oh, I didn't do more than last time. Oh, I didn't progressive overload. However, my buddy Turner, he goes to the gym, lights out. Every set in the paint, Turner Riddle. When we train together, it's like war. Every set, grinding, every rep, beyond failure, extended sets, rest pause, forced reps. Yeah, we come out of it, and yeah, it might take us three to four days to recover. Here's the deal. Most people aren't training upper, lower, or full body. So all this recoverable training, that's for the people doing the science stuff, where they're doing the full body three days a week, or the upper, lower every four days, every two days. Look, man, most people, when they train chest, that's their chest day for the week. They train legs, that's their leg day for a week. You're telling me that in six days you can't recover? Come on. At the end of the day, people just don't train hard. So here's my thing. Go to the gym. Train as hard as you fucking can. Train as hard as you fucking can. Now, within reason. So for example, if I'm doing an all-out set, which today, for example, I did back, worked my way up on the supported T-bar row, and I did a max set. I got six reps, but that last rep, I'm like, oh, I was done. I moved on. You're not going to get three reps with the same rate. Wait, if you do six reps of failure. And I usually like to rest about one, two minutes between sets. Oh, that's not enough. The science so shoot three minutes. I get bored. I'm not going to text. I don't want to pick up my phone. I just want to get in, get out, get the fuck out. I want to focus on my workout. Go to the gym. Do your work upsets. Hit that hard fucking set. Shit, if you have a training partner, help get a couple extra reps. You feel you got more in the tank, you just need to regroup, do a rest pause set. And if you feel like you still got more, do another fucking set. Move on. Do the same fucking thing. Go to the gym. Four to five, no more than five days a week. I like to go four. I do do an extra deadlift day, which I don't go to failure because I fucking love deadlifting. That's another thing. Do what you love to do. When I go to the gym, I love to fucking push myself. And guess what? I'm still doing it because I love this shit. I've been in the gym over 30 years. I was 13 years old when I first started training. Haven't missed a workout in 31 years. The reason is I love this shit. I love this shit. Every few years we get a new version of creatine. Creatine HCL, creatine ethyl ester, you name it, there's a new creatine. But one stands out as the best, as the tried and true, and that's creatine monohydrate. But not all creatines are created equal. Most of the creatine comes from China. I'm not saying anything bad about Chinese ingredients, a lot of them are great. But if I'm taking creatine, the most important, most beneficial, most amazing, most studied supplement, I want to get it from the most pure source. I want to get it from the source where all the studies that we cite were done on. And that is Crea Pure Creatine. So that's why I came out with my own brand of MTS Nutrition Crea Pure Creatine. Not only are you getting the Crea Pure branded creatine, but you're also getting it from a source that you know tests it coming in, going out from MTS Nutrition, the brand you love, the brand you trust, and by buying from us, you're buying it from a company who supports you, supports you and here to help you reach your goals, support companies who love you, support companies who don't hate you. If you take creatine, take MTS Nutrition, Crea Pure Creatine, I can say this with the certainty, with the utmost certainty, that this is the best creatine you can buy, period. When I go to the gym, I'm so stressed for my day of work, so stressed, and I'm behind a desk. I just want to get in there. I'm like, let's fucking go. And then I'm motivated because I coach kids and they train so hard. I'm like, you know what? I still got it. 
And I go to the gym and I safely, safely, use the word safely, proper form, train my fucking ass off. But this whole like science shit, like these fucking one arm pull downs, they're like, I'm gonna feel my lat. Eek, 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 eek. Fuck! Fucking pull some fucking weight. Ah! Ah, hold on to something. You should be going heavy enough. You're holding on to something. Ah! No, instead, people are like, I'm just feeling the contraction. I'm getting that mind muscle. Oh, full range of motion. Let me pull my fucking arm behind my back. You're like this at the end. Jesus Christ. Intensity over everything. Guarantee you this. You watch those IFBB pros train. There are some who do some controlled shit, but they're going heavy as fuck with pretty good form. They just have to be bigger than everyone. Oh, well, what about the naturals? You look at the natural bodybuilders. A lot of the guys who place really well train really fucking heavy and hard. Bottom line, these studies give us a great outline, a great guide of how to design our programs. But if you are someone who goes to the gym, you want to maximize your gains, you need to train hard, you need to progressively overload, you need to pay attention to form. But if you feel like you have one rep in reserve, you probably had fucking three. You just don't have the fucking mindset to get the extra couple reps because you're weak. You have to be mentally strong, be physically strong. Tap in. Oh, I only got one more. Fuck that. I'm getting two more. Ah, how many times you've done that? I do it at least twice a week where I think I'm spent and I convince myself that I'm a big fucking pussy and I get that extra rep. Anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that video. I'm gonna link the data down below. I'm also gonna link, link Menno's Instagram, the best scientific follow on Instagram. By far the best. I, I don't even know the guy. He probably doesn't even follow me. I fucking love this guy. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Go to tigerfitness.com, support us. Coupon code TRICK, T-R-I-C-K, TRICK, gets you 10% off at tigerfitness.com for the rest of the week. Coupon code TRICK, of course, Subscribe to this channel, like this video, comment what you think down below. Help me there, algorithm. Comment, 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 comment. And of course, remember, that's not a game. Fish oil is one of the staple supplements that you should take. Now, for me, I like to have a two to one EPA to DHA ratio. Now, DHA is awesome. A lot of cognitive benefits come from DHA, but if you get anti-inflammation and things that we go through as people who want to train, who want to be active, want to feel great. You want slightly more EPA. That's why I created MTS Nutrition Fish Oil. Now this is a two to one EPA to DHA ratio. It is fantastic and it has citrus. So it's not gonna give you the fishy burps and the way we make it, it's not gonna be rancid. That's one thing you gotta fear. A lot of these fish oils, they can go rancid and actually be more bad than they are good. But we actually don't have that problem with MTS Nutrition Fish Oil. The dosing I recommend will be above label. Label we just put take one soft gel or as directed by a fitness professional or a medical professional. But for me, I like to take three grams of total EPA and DHA a day combined. So with that said, I take five MTS Nutrition fish oil a day. Now, I love my brand. I recommend it. It's a tremendous value. Available right now at tigerfitness.com. If you want a great fish oil, if you want to support a company who loves you, support a company who doesn't hate you, I support a company with the best customer service and people, American family-owned company, MTS Nutrition, TigerFitness.com. Get your fish oil today.